The numbers from the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast outlined a growing flood disaster today. Up to 10 inches of rain in a matter of hours and 100,000 people forced to evacuate so far. All of this caused by remnants of Tropical Storm Lee, already blamed for nine deaths since it struck the Gulf Coast last weekend. By this morning, downpours in northeastern Pennsylvania turned even peaceful waterways into torrents. Moilsaw Creek raged into Montoursville, 30 miles outside Wilkes-Barre, and fast-rising water threatened the region with the kind of flooding not seen since Hurricane Agnes almost four decades ago. Well, I've lived here all my life, 56 years now, and it's the worst I've ever seen. I went through the 72 flood, and this actually is probably going to end up beating that. In all, 70,000 people along the Susquehanna River and its tributaries in Pennsylvania were told to evacuate by late this afternoon. The orders stretched south to Harrisburg, the state capital, where crews sandbagged the governor's mansion. Governor Tom Corbett spoke this afternoon. Some of the flood gauges that we use out there cannot give us reliable data now because they are so far underwater. We face a clear public health emergency because sewage treatment plants such as the one near Hershey are underwater and no longer working. As you know, flood water is toxic and is polluted. If the sewage treatment plants aren't working, they're going to be polluted. If you don't have to be in the water, stay out of the water. The Susquehanna was headed toward a crest this evening in Wilkes-Barre at 41 feet. Elsewhere in the state, flooding in Dover Township engulfed a mobile home community. It's a nightmare, and we pray to God that it soon stops and it recedes. I'm hoping a lot of people don't lose a lot of their belongings, but it looks like there's going to be some major water damage. And near Silver Spring, Pennsylvania, the Conedogwinnett Creek was flowing out of its banks, leaving nervous homeowners to decide whether to go or stay. I've never had it uh, this much fear going into this as I do right now uh, of, of what the potential damage could be. And, uh, you know, it, it's scary. It really is. To the north, some 20,000 people had already been evacuated Wednesday around Binghamton, New York, and neighboring communities. There, the Susquehanna broke records and kept rising. And some people resorted to airboats to get around. Across the city, it was hard to tell where roads used to be or to find this school's football field. Only the scoreboard and goalposts still rose above the huge pool of water. Shopping centers, cars, homes were all submerged. Some of them have been so bad that we can't control the, the water coming in. As fast as we're pumping it out, it's coming right back in. And other residents, they've only got uh, an inch or two in, in the basement. So, but we're still trying to get everybody out to a safe spot. Life is more important than people's property as far as I'm concerned. It's a little scary, but I, I do know that um, the emergency crews in that have been taking good care of everybody so far. And um, at least where we're at, they're, they're ready to evacuate and they're ready to take care of everybody. Flooding in New York also closed a 100-mile stretch of Interstate 90 along the Mohawk River. To the south, Patterson, New Jersey, pummeled by Hurricane Irene, faced new trouble as this new round of rain sent the Passaic River rising again. It's still raining now, so what are we going to do? You're still concerned that how much more is going to come up. And in Baltimore and suburban Washington, D.C., water pooled when it had nowhere else to go. The rain is expected to subside over the next few days. And late today, two towns in eastern Maryland, Havre de Grace and Port Deposit, ordered well over 1,000 people to move out of low-lying areas. A short time ago, I spoke with Mayor Thomas Layton of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, where a mandatory evacuation order is already in effect. Mayor Layton, thanks for joining us. So you're still expecting the crest this evening. What's the situation right now? Right now, we're waiting for the river to crest at 41 feet. I believe we're at 38 feet. And if you can see the bridge behind me, you'll see how close it is uh, to coming over. But we're very confident in the dike system that it will hold and that we'll be back in our homes on Sunday. Well, that, that dike system, that's a levee system that I guess is uh, relatively new. Uh, has it been tested at these kinds of heights? Not at this kind of height. No, this will be a new record for this dike. Uh, the levy system uh, but you know again we're we're very confident that we're going to be okay
Now, how's the evacuation going so far? The evacuation of City of Wilkesbury went very smooth. We put our emergency operation in effect uh, starting yesterday. Uh, we knew we were going to have to evacuate people in the low lying areas, and we've done that. Uh, we've had great cooperation from all levels of government, from the federal government to the state government, county, the school, local st school district with the evacuation centers, um, and the residents. Uh, the business community cooperated when I asked them this morning to close their business to eliminate 15,000 people in our downtown so we could uh, avoid a, a traffic congestion. So Things have run smoothly so far, and there are some real adverse conditions. And, and what are you telling people about how long do they might be away for, what to bring, what to, what to prepare for? We told the people to be, you know, plan on being out of their home for 72 hours. This was not going to be a 12 or 24 hour evacuation. We have to make sure once the river starts to recede that it's going to stay within the banks. In, in the city of Wilkesbury, we have four creeks that run through the city. Uh, the one in South Wilkesbury is one that we're really concerned about. Uh, that's the Solomon Creek. And this will be the third time in the last two weeks that we've had to evacuate the people from South Wilkesbury. So we want to make sure that before we put the people back in the comfort of their home that we, they're out of harm's way. So are there places for the people to go? Are they going to shelters? Do you know? And, and how are they handling it so far? They're handling it very well. The shelters are full uh, right now. The uh, shelters in the city of Wilkesbury are full. We've opened up one in Hanover Township at the Hanover High School, and we have one open up in Plains Township right outside the city limits. And it's been very, uh, very, uh, a very smooth operation so far. Uh, people make the comparison to uh, 1972, Hurricane Agnes, the big flood you had, uh, but that's a long time ago. Is this something that the city and its people prepare for in some way? Well, we, we prepared for it. This will be my seventh uh, flood incident since I became the mayor in 2004. Uh, we, we've experienced this in 2004, September 2004. And we've experienced it in 2006. Uh, so we, we have an operation, uh, an emergency operation uh, plan that we follow, and you know, we've been following it so far. And, and you know, knock on wood, uh, everything we've asked has been done. The residents have been very cooperative. The Red Cross has been out you know, all night. Our, our police, our fire personnel, I mean, everybody's really working hand in hand. It's been a solid cooperation. And you, meant, you mentioned the uh, help you're getting from other parts of government. What kind of, uh, what kind of emergency help is coming in? Well, we have Pima and FEMA officials coming in. Tomorrow I have a meeting with Senator Toomey uh, at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. I have Senator Casey uh, coming in. I've spoken with Governor Corbett last night. I spoke with him first thing this morning, uh, made him aware of the situation. We've also spoken to other officials in the governor's office. Uh, I spoke with Senator Udichak and State Representative Eddie Day Pashinsky. You know, they're, they're all concerned. They're all here to help. And, you know, once, this sits, once, once the river goes down, and we have time to digest what we just went through. We're still going to have millions of dollars worth of damage. We have creek walls that have pulled away from the ground. Uh, we have some infrastructure problems that we're aware of. And, you know, we'll be sitting down. I think I heard a number in the city of Wilkesbury. We're probably close to $3 million of uh, estimated damage right now. And what is your sense of how long this goes on when you're talking about when the river starts to go down? Well, the river should start going down based on the predictions, and we're going to get an update within the next couple hours. But it should start going down sometime during the middle of the night. Uh, and, and, you know, that's when we'll start. You know, we won't be relaxed until we get the people back in the comforts of their home, but uh, it should start receding this evening. All right, Mayor Thomas. Early this morning. All right, Mayor Thomas Layden, thanks so much for joining us, and good luck. All right, thank you very much.